All right. Hello there, Dr. Tony, and welcome to the Health Detective Podcast. How are you? Good. How are you, sir? I can hardly remember a time I was better. Thank you for asking. Um, I, I guess that's kind of a lie. That's normally my catchphrase. But as you know, I was just in that moldy apartment. But yep. hey, we're on the up and up. So I, I can say right. I can hardly remember a time I was better You're to a getting degree. Better. You are better. Got it. <laughs> Yes, yes, sir. And that's uh, also why, if you guys are watching the video version of this, we got an interesting, totally unmatched lighting for the background here. Uh, we're doing what we can. Most of the audience is actually on audio for this particular podcast anyway. Yeah. Now, normally, I always wait till the end to shout out the business stuff, but Dr. Tony was cool enough to come on totally enthusiastically with really nothing to like pitch you guys or offer you guys in, in a certain sense. So that makes me want to go out of my way even more. Uh, can you please shout out your practice in person? Like, where is it at? Because I'm, I know we're going to have FDNs that live in the area. We were in Upland, California, which is, if you don't know where Upland, California is, near Ontario Airport. Uh, we've been here for over 20 years now. We're a brick, brick and mortar building. It's built since 1930. Covered offices for about, about 50 years now. I'm, I'm the fifth doctor and I'm only surviving doctor. I'm kidding. Uh, everyone just kind of retires. Uh, <laughs> but a lot of it is we're, we're old school. We're hands-on chiropractic. We don't sell pillows, vitamins, nothing in my office. We just take x-rays, treat people, and get people healthy, and let them, let them go, go live their life. Very cool. All right. Well, normally we start the show by asking uh, what that person's health symptoms were and, and what they looked like. I, I really don't even know if that was something that you dealt with. Did you deal with your own health issues, or did you get into chiropractic for a different reason? I became a chiropractor because I was a, a partly a chemist for a while after undergraduate. I didn't know what I want to do yet. And working over in a hood, if, if you've ever worked as a chemist before, you're leaning over a, a lab sink or a lab tube or a, if you want to call it a vent, like you would like, like you would uh, uh, washing dishes for about anywhere from half hour to an hour at a time. That hurt my back. I like to lift weights. And then I, when I lift weights, it would hurt and I would I'd be okay. And all of a sudden go back and forth, back and forth. So a chiropractor, after the second fix it, I was hooked. I'm like, okay, this is something I want to do. They, we live a good lifestyle as a chiropractor if we choose to. We were able to work uh, 30 hours a week if you want to. Also, I play golf once a week. It allows me to stay healthy, active for my profession, but also it also incorporates my own lifestyle to being active. And if you want to call it walk the walk. So I've been a chiropractor for over 20 years now. Geez, it's been a long time. And uh, and I enjoy it. I love what I do. My wife asked me a couple weeks ago, what's my day of the week? It's Monday. I love coming back to see my patient, make sure they're doing okay, see more people. And, 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 and excited not to know what's going to happen on Monday because we have emergency patients come in. People to walk in the door. I, can you help me today? Sure. We already saw people this morning. We just from my partner and I, Dr. Weaver, we just run the whole time and we go home, take a nap, come back, do it again. We love just seeing people. We don't do a lot of fancy stuff. Again, we just adjust patients, get them healthy, give them guidance how to stay healthy. At that point, we keep them on their way. Yeah, and actually that story is conceptually similar to a lot of the stuff that we hear on this show, right? Because no one really... I shouldn't say it's this true for chiropractic. It's really not. But for FDNs, for example, there's no five-year-old out there right now that's saying, I want to be an FDN practitioner, mom and dad, when I grow up. We're just not there yet. And I would say, you know, there might really be a young kid that sees that in their family and wants to go do that. But generally speaking, it is kind of the same thing. Because even my chiropractic uh, chiropractor that I used here, it was something with a back injury. You know, he knew nothing about it. He went there. It's what like changed his life. And so he's like, I want to go do that with other people. So again, it's very conceptually similar uh, to how many people become FDNs. What I'm particularly interested in today, because somehow, despite FDN actually being started in a chiropractor's office, as you probably know from talking to Reed, we've yeah. never had a chiro on here to talk about chiropractic medicine yeah. and how it is a more holistic and functional approach. So for those that I won't go as far as to say for those who have never heard about it. Our audience has heard about chiropractic medicine. Many probably go. Well, and but, some people in yeah. my audience have not. Okay. Have not seen a chiropractor. Half my patients, my new patients I see, Evan, have never seen a chiropractor before or can, are just curious what it is. So this is 2023, well, right? And it yeah. still isn't mainstream medicine for the reason, as we know, we're not mark we don't have millions of dollars of marketing to get out there and push to everyone on TV commercials on Netflix, whatever it is, we, we're just, we try to keep it mom and pop, but we want people to realize we should be mainstream for the reason that as we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. Yeah. Well then actually, how about that? Let's assume some level of ignorance here, because I also remember, I got to remember all the time that there's always going to be at least a handful of people that clicked on this podcast, having never heard of it before, because they might've been looking up, you know, what is chiropractic medicine? So what the heck is it? How is it different from other things that people might go to like a physical therapist, for example? So what we do specifically different, we work with our hands for the most part. That's our modality. We use these tools as an artist would 
to make sure we can manipulate the spine and get things to feel better. So in our office, what we do is we do imaging. We take x-rays initially, and some chiropractors, some, some chiropractors do, some don't. And our goal with x-rays is to show you as a patient exactly how we're going to help you, what bones are going to move properly, how your bones are going to be set versus someone who might be an ideal normal, say, image or picture of someone's x-ray, take yours, put on the other side, and go, this is how it's different. I want people to understand, as you know too, Evan, if people learn differently, correct? They learn sometimes visual, sometimes auditory, sometimes combination, sometimes sense of smell, whatever it might be, even sound too. So as a chiropractor, we do a good job communicating our our if you want to call it a message to our patients by makes understanding where how do they learn? Maybe visual with an X-ray, normal versus their X-ray. Maybe the auditory of how these bones should move properly and how they don't move properly. So a lot of it is, can we give them enough? visual, auditory, and a mix of two, so they get to understand in, in their terms what it actually might be. Some people may say they have a back problem. Some people may say they have sciatica. Some people pronounce it even sciatica sometimes too, which I'm okay with because they understand what it is. It's just the wording might be off a little bit. So, And as you know too, Evan, as part of our, our care is getting them to understand, and this is one of my, sometimes I do some workshops on this too, workshops in the public for this, schools, for example, is getting to getting yourself as a chiropractor to show that you care. And a lot of times yeah. when we do that, we listen to somebody, sit down with them. We're not sitting there with our phone and taking no soul time looking at them at all. We're face to face with them. So we're helping, help, helping them understand we're there to help them. That alone as a chiropractor, as anyone in healthcare, will get your patients to like you at least. Because it's not very common as it, as it, it should be. But it's not very common in healthcare in today, 2023. Yeah, so, unfortunately. And with chiropractic too, once we get someone to understand, our goal is the x-ray you're seeing, can we move those bones better to make your x-ray to a closer to normal? And by meaning that is causing more jo joint motion is fine. So part of it is the bones are connected by two facets at the very bottom. They're basically set like this. And what happens is sometimes they get stuck. If they get stuck, the disc between the bones is called the disc problem will make that disc want to shrink instead of being nice and big and thick. That means you've lost motion of the spine. A motion of you losing spine, losing motion in your wrist, for example, what happens when you lose motion short term, it may cause pain, it may cause pain in that joint area, it may cause some soreness. Long term, now everything tightens and shortens. So if I've lost motion in my wrist, what happens in my hand? I have hand weakness. I have forearm weakness too. Everything gets weaker, tighter, weaker, tighter. Then that becomes chronic to where then you feel weaker, tight, weaker, tight. The problem is, in the spine, that disc we talked about, that spacing, protects nerve coming through that nerve, as you see in the back behind me, can cause problems such as arm pain, leg pain, back pain, neck pain, even headaches too, neuropathy down the arms, down the legs, into the head. Neuropathy meaning for us, if someone if someone's asking about that, how does chiropractic, what is neuropathy versus just pain? It's gonna be tingling, burning, numbness, weakness, or sharp pain especially in my perspective, when they're not moving. That's the biggest thing. When they're not moving, they're not moving the body, they're not moving a joint, not moving the wrist, but they're still having pain or weakness yeah. in the hand or tingling or numbness. So our goal is finding out the source of their problem in their spine, that's what it is, and getting that corrected or moved properly. Then over time, once you cause normal motion, then the joints start to become more free. And once it becomes more free, then the muscles have to be stretched, ligaments have to be stretched, you give it full range of motion, then also get the area to heal properly. Meaning, healing meaning it goes back to normal position, normal motion, and normal strength also. Part of our chiropractic care is not only get you pain-free, but also back to your quality of life where there's no pain and by building strength through exercise will give you. At that point, those exercises will help now rebuild that strength so you can maintain that habit to stay healthy. My goal is to make sure that you understand how to become your best doctor, your best chiropractor on your own, once you reach a good level of health, you can maintain that on your own because you know what normal should feel like. Once you have that, then when you go back a little bit, okay, then go in there for a quick checkup, make sure things good, then go back here again. Mm. At that point, maintain my routine. So my goal is not just to make you feel better, but also give you, educate you how to get yourself healthy and then stay healthy on your own. I'm too busy as it is, Evan. I'm not, I, I can't see everyone in the world, right? Right. <laughs> Let's make sure we get people healthy, but also education is, is the biggest thing with as being a chiropractic health practitioner. The education is important to understand and also comprehend and also act on. So I'm seeing someone for maybe 10 minutes. 
my treatment is not very long. Yet. I don't have time to sit chat. I've been giving a joke here and there or talk about football from over the weekend. And my team's a fan, so I, we lose every year. That's our plan. But the goal is how do we get them now once you've got, left my office, do your exercise, do your stretching, do your icing, your heating, whatever it might be, to make sure when I see you next time, okay, how'd it go? What else can I help you with? What else are we going to strength exercise? How's your activities going? You know, so as, a, as you live your normal life as a patient, things are going to happen to your body, right? Yeah. Stress, mental, physical, family, whatever it might be. How do we now use our, our techniques or habits or health habits to get your body to get healthy and stay healthy? That's the overall. That's, that's the big picture chiropractor. We always talk, always talk about the benefits, right? Relieving back pain, relieving neck pain. How do we do that? We make things want to move better and also stay better. That's the overall plan. Uh, amazing. And it's kind of funny. So for those that are training in FDN or might already be practitioners, tell me if that sounds familiar. Trying to help this person or, or client or patient, whatever you'll call them, well enough so that they don't need us constantly, right? They kind of mm -hmm. know how to manage through their own life. Now we're always going to be the experts, a check-in, a great way to say it, or a check-off, yeah. right? Maybe we need a little adjustment. Maybe we need an extra lab. But generally speaking, we want to empower these people to go out and live their own life so that they don't need to keep running thousands mm -hmm. of dollars of labs. They don't need to come in to get adjustments several times a week, right? That's the whole idea. I love that that's uh, the philosophy um, of chiropractic medicine. The first question I actually should have asked now that I'm thinking, because this one, this one drives me crazy. I remember uh, there was a family member that I had, I believe, I, it was a family member, a friend. Either way, I had someone very specifically okay. that when I told them I was going to a chiropractor for the first time said, oh, I don't think that's a real doctor. So just to be clear, uh, could you just maybe give some bullet points of the training that if I wanted to go become a chiropractor right now, um, I would have to do because uh, some people apparently think that this is a weekend course that you go do and then all of a sudden you're good to go. I spend, my, my school is in La Habra, of Southern California. Some, some kind of Southern California doctors went there too. It was called Ellie Chiropractic College. Now it's called, it's called Southern California University of Health Sciences. We have about three years, three full years of anatomy, of physiology, uh, of some biochemistry. Even though we're not, we're not dr a drug profession, which is, in my sense, a good thing, we understand the mechanics of the body. We, we spend more time studying the human body than most doctors do, unless they're specialized in orthopedics or neurology. So a general practitioner, for them to say, for example, the chiropractic may not help you, I go, first of all, you're not, you're not educated enough, general practitioner, to actually say that directly to your patient based on what I do. After you've done your studying and, and we've gone through the school and we passed our classes per se, then we have to take what's called state boards. State boards do not happen over one weekend. They happen over two and a half years, part one, two, three, and four. These states, these are state run regulations that are happened nationally because we're nationally licensed at that point it allows us them the state to go. Now you've hit the standard of care to now practice chiropractic. Then you have about two years, a year and a half of getting enough adjustments in, exams in, treatments in, so doing our in-house in residency programs to actually graduate. And if you pass all the board, which some people don't, then you have an opportunity to go and get your license with your, with your specifically with nationally, but also licensed per state. And you have to re-regulate or re-license re every year of 24 hour education to make sure that license stays valid. So, so right. you're not only practicing chiropractic under the state law and even federal law, but also now have malpractice that covers you as a licensed chiropractor, licensed healthcare practitioner. And, and being a healthcare practitioner at our level, there's only two others, medical doctors and DOs. So consider us not real doctors. It's fine for me if that's your opinion, but legally we are. Sorry. Yep. I know. I, and that's why I wanted you to say that. Yeah. It, it, it's yeah. true. I mean, look at what you just said right here. You got three years for the one part, two and a half, two and a half. I mean, you're talking best case scenario. You're looking at eight years anyway. Oh, minimum. Um, yeah, minimum. So I, it's, it's very clear, I think, to anyone listening to this particular show that obviously there's a push from certain parts of Western society that would not uh, want people going to professionals that I mean, you just said it, right? You just said why you guys um, kind of get pushed on the back burner is because you don't want them coming in all the time. You do want to empower them in such a way that they need you less and less and can go do their own thing. That's the antithesis of the medical model. That is not a, a poke at Western medicine doctors, by the way. I know 99% of people who got into Western medicine uh, did so probably for similar reasons to all of us getting into this work. They had a good experience. They want to go help people. They're smart as crap. They're disciplined as hell to go do what they're doing but they're in a system uh, that really doesn't let them win unless people are sick. It's kind of, it's 
you're playing a losing game, even if you're the best person in the world, right? It's not their fault. Well, it's something to where when you're a chiropractor and you're, we're, we only do private practice. That's what mm-hmm. some, some chiropractors are, if you want to call it network with Kaiser or other healthcare plans or work comp, whatever it might be. But as a chiropractor, you're really in charge of how you want to practice. There's no one above you telling you, we're actually at a hospital telling you, hey, you have to do yet prescribe the medication. Hey, this is what we do in our hospital. Mm-hmm. There's no one, there's no supervisor above you. So it's up to you how you want to practice. Some chiropractors, hey, I'm okay with it. If they want to practice on the medical model, it's up to them. But as a chiropractor, as a standard chiropractic care, we're, our goal is to stay outside the medical model because we don't prescribe medication. We don't do surgeries. We want to heal, heal things naturally if we can. If not, then if a patient of mine goes, hey, look, I'm not getting better. I tell a patient, you, you're, you're an iffy case. If you're not getting better than two weeks, I'm sending you to your medical doctor. We're getting an MRI. Fair enough. Let's see what else you need. But if I can help them, because they're coming for help, like you said, they're tired of the system. They're 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 desperate for help. They've already gone the medical model. So at that point, they go, "What else can you do for me, doc? I'm here to help you." But if I can, I'll let you know. At that point, let's get you the right doctor. I I don't see anything unreasonable about that whatsoever. Sounds like exactly how healthcare should be applied to people, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and realize as chiropractors, we're neurologists, we're orthopedists. Um, we're, we're, we're those type of fields mechanically and neurologically able to help someone. So when you have those symptoms of those concerns, see us to, if you don't want to be on medications. Because what happens, what happens when someone has that, you go to a pain management doctor. What do pain management doctors do? What kind of pill do you want today? What color do you want? What letter do you want to start with? And then they're tired of that. This is what comes, and even, even with healthcare now being 2023, now not only waiting for two weeks to see your doctor, now you're waiting a month, six weeks, eight weeks out. It's just, your it's just to see your medical doctor. You can see a chiropractor within one or two days yeah. and start caring now versus waiting to see your doctor, then refer it out for physical therapy. That may not work. Then, then for it out for shot, then it works. At that point, you might be dead by the time you check out your medical doctor. Yeah. I know there's uh, bad apples in any field, but I, I got to say this actually just happened recently. It was like three weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I hadn't actively been to my chiropractor in a couple of years. I um, mean, I had been to him like for a couple of years straight at one point. Yeah. And we talk all the time. If we message on Facebook, whatever, that's about it. But, and by the way, when, when are you going to do that with your MD, right? Like we constantly he sends me articles and stuff. This is a guy that's been practicing for 39 years, by the way, which is amazing. Wow. And so he, uh, I, I messaged him. I said, I, I just needed some help with some stuff. I was having a particular pain in my neck from something that I did lifting. He calls me back immediately, fits me in the same day. Like literally his hours aren't even in that and just make sure I get in. I mean, that, and that's a, that's a human thing, right? That's beyond, I guess, just any particular profession. But I think this is the kind of stuff you see a lot in the more holistic health spaces because there's such a strong human interaction here. It's not just numbers. It's not just buff people out as quick as you can. Yes, adjustments are quick. I get that. But still, it's not It's not that. Um, I, I have a really interesting question because I don't think most FDNs uh, even would know the answer to this. And you certainly could tell the story better than myself. How was chiropractic medicine started to begin with? Because how it started was pretty phenomenal with what they did for this person. Well, 1895 is when the first, I want to call it, I call it the U.S. adjustment occurred because because Bone doctors have been around for centuries, right? Chinese okay. medicine, all this stuff too. It basically helps someone, uh, BJ, or yeah, BJ helps someone clear their ear to, to go from being deaf to not deaf with an adjustment. Simple. But again, it's, this, is, this is the beginning of U.S. discovered medicine, uh, chiropractic and developed through DD, developed and developed into a science, not just a philosophy. That makes sense? It absolutely does, and it's crazy. There's a lot of, for example, Chinese philosophical medication medicines for one too, or or healing healing theories. But the science behind it is what what D. D. Palmer, what I want to call it, mean uh, 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 chiropractic biophysics is is a big proponent of that too. The science has been proven to make chiropractic valid. So awesome. it's not just the philosophy; it's also the science that backs up the last hundred plus years now allowed us to become a profession, a licensed profession that, that is really regulated by the state. So when you have a complaint, you call the state, they come to us and go, hey, what's really going on here? So we're regulated because we are that, if you want to call it, valid of a healthcare practitioner. It, it's amazing how, like, did you kind of even wonder where do these stigmas uh, come from around this stuff? Because even acupuncturists, there is a ton of science now 
behind mm-hmm. acupuncture and what they're doing. But it's amazing because you kind of grow up and somewhere along the lines, like my parents never even commented on these things, so I didn't get it from them. Yeah. But somewhere along your educational process, you get in your head that, oh, this isn't right or this isn't backed. It's like that couldn't be further from the truth. And my, oh my gosh, my favorite thing, and I don't, I swear in my life, I don't mean this in a political way. Anyone that listens regularly knows that I'm a down the middle type of person. But the follow the science thing drove me crazy because it was never about follow the science. And I don't just mean for COVID. I mean, in a general perspective here, because if it was about follow the science, people would be wearing blue light blockers at night. They would turn off the artificial lights. They would get morning sunlight. It has nothing to do with the science. What you mean is follow what the media told you is the latest science. No one follows the science, right? No one's actually reading these things and seeing what's right or wrong. So if the news told you to do it, COVID or not, whatever it is, then it's all of a sudden science. But there's a million things that we ignore on a daily basis or just refuse to participate in because it's like too weird or whatever. But it's totally science backed. And and I mean, I think chiropractic, thankfully, and acupuncturists, uh, acupuncturists are getting uh, more and more accepted, especially in my generation. I don't I, I don't know that anyone would say to me, oh, I don't believe in those things. I, I don't think I would hear something like that. But you go 20, 30 years ahead of me in my dad's generation. Yeah, you probably would hear stuff like that. But it's I proven. think social media is in a good job, if you want to call it patients validating for chiropractors, acupuncturists, et cetera, that it is a good profession. And not just us saying it, yeah. our patients saying to you, look, go see a chiropractor because they have this, this, and this. I saw a chiropractor, they helped me with this, this, this. So going from my generation of being just yellow pages, having no social media, having no YouTube, no Tic Tac, no Facegram, no Instabook, nothing like that too. None of that stuff, Evan. We went just yellow pages. It was all word of mouth. So whatever yeah. your parents told you, whatever your friend told you, whatever they told you at church or at your, at your wherever you are, that was your truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for some, it can be very favorable to the profession. And for yeah. others, it's based on nothing. They're saying it's bad. So and I think awesome. if people believe rumors, and then they, then they want to actually follow and do the research to follow the truth. Mm-hmm. That's that's the biggest. I, I think this is just centuries of, of of understanding media and and how social norms change over time. Is is finding someone who's credible, have them say something what they believe is true, and then it becomes everyone's truth because they want to do the research. So by having yeah. people having a bigger bigger sample size of people saying chiropractic is valid, boom, I'm I'm busier than ever. Evan. I mean, mm-hmm. if people saying and having YouTube and having. Google reviews, having, we talked about social media if you want to also, but that allows us as a voice to put our name out in the community. And at that point, let other people jump on that, if you want to call that bandwagon, go, yeah, it is good. Yeah, it does work. Yeah, it did work for me. Yeah, this is, I saw your story. I'm here to see you because you, you helped this person over here. Yeah, that's so, that, so that's true. That's big picture. That's so true because it's the same thing with this, right? Like I think about how I started on my holistic healing journey, which was now 10 years ago, basically. Well, it started by going online. So the internet is actually this great mediator of stuff where, okay, someone with my weird conditions back then, I might not even have known anyone else with those conditions. But not only can I go online and get into back then, it was kind of still forums, right? It wasn't just Facebook groups. Um, You know, I can not only go to forums where other people have this condition, but now I can hear their user input, their unique experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually, um, seriously, if someone, again, listens regularly, they know this. I'm really not one to go much against Western medicine. I think they have a lot of amazing strengths. But I heard, I saw rather an interesting meme of sorts the other day. And what it said was like, don't confuse, uh, you know, your six hours of learning about my condition and, you know, a couple of lectures with my 20 years of experiencing it. And I'm like, that's actually a really fair point. I mean, that, that you know, again, you're not going to know the same stuff in the same way necessarily as the doctor. But yeah, you do know a lot about what it's like to live with this on a daily basis and, a basis and what works and what doesn't. Uh, medical school is extensive, but medicine is unbelievably extensive. You can't learn everything in depth that's why there's so many specialties and think about how long those people still go to school right Huge. yeah I mean, a lot of it is and and once you've gone to school and you know how to learn then you're gonna you're gonna want to give some credibility i'm gonna try this i'm gonna i, I, I my, my staff does all the time when they your patient calls in i want to know where they came from sometimes they'll say google sometimes they'll say yelp review sometimes they'll say a website but it's usually a co- combination of all three or four because they've done their own research now people know how to research on their own for the most part so they can actually make an educated guess what's going to help them overall so having that and having reputation allows people to understand 
they're going to spend the time because now they know how to search it. Not just, not just grandpa told me this, mom told me that, my uncle told me this. It's yeah. now it's then they know how to go down that rabbit hole. Maybe YouTube, but anything, anything I do at my home, Evan, first place, first place I go is YouTube. How do I fix this? How do I yep. do this? Because I want to know from someone who's done it right, that point, what else can I do to follow their example? Yeah. So why not use that same, if you want to call it, way to get someone's reputation, understand how they work their practice. I just don't understand how people don't do social media. Mm -hmm. how, how do they yeah. not, how do they not, if, for example, as a practitioner, how do you not show your voice to people in your community if you want them to come and see you, to make them, to help them, unless you can stand on the corner with a billboard sign every day, at that point, get yourself a way to get that voice out there. If you said, call your patients, check with them on, answer your Facebook comments. Answer your Facebook questions. If they ask you a question on Instagram, answer the questions. I, I my my phone, I don't leave my notifications on, but my phone, I get stuff and check it three or four times a day. They don't even message me today. What's going on? On my on my Yelp or Google reviews too. Okay, can I get in today? Should we call my staff and see what I can get you in for? But it's having right. that connection, that connection, that connection, that immediate response if you can, so you understand you're there for them. Because that but that's what I like to do though. Some some practitioners, they don't like social media at all. I'm like, so you're on social media, but you want to grow your practice. I ask them how you do that. They're like, I don't know. Okay, I can't help you. you know, yeah, it's something you, you got... have to put the work in. It takes right. work. I love your YouTube example because I mean, one, my dad does the same thing, and so do I. It's kind of funny though because he'll be fixing anything, and you're like, yes. "How'd you learn to do this?" It's like, well, I just figured it out. I went to watch the video. But what's even more interesting about what you just said, kind of from that business perspective, especially for our practitioners out there. When you go to YouTube and look up, like, let's say it was like how to resolve cystic acne, right? Something I dealt with at one point before finding these modalities. So I go online and figure that out. Not only do I see the YouTube video, but I can see the view count. Uh, prior to a few years ago, you could see likes and dislikes. And you can see the feedback that the comments are getting. Or I'm sorry, the, the feedback within the comments, I should say. And so now not only do you see the video, because that doesn't necessarily mean anything. This person could be totally full of crap. But when there's 100 comments that say, oh, my gosh, this works so well. Hey, been doing this for four weeks. This is really going well. Best video on fixing my refrigerator I've ever seen on YouTube. And so now there's this interesting dynamic at play where the consumers are the ones that get to decide what works and what doesn't, what's right and what's wrong. Um, and sometimes, you know, that leads us a little bit astray. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that hasn't happened. Uh, but generally speaking, given enough time, we do know uh, what's best for our health. We know what's going to work. And, you know, if thousands of people are saying something works, I think that's um, that's when, you know, we should bring the science in just to validate it 100 percent. Because I hate the people that I, I'm listen, I'm big on studies, by the way. I have to be because I got into this so damn young and without any degrees that if someone was going to debate me on it and say, Evan, you don't know what you're talking about. The only thing I could do is show them studies. Yeah. However, I always remind people that studies come originally from hypotheses. And sometimes you just got a brilliant person that gets a random idea, but most likely the hypothesis comes from some anecdotes. Mm -hmm. You know, like a bunch of people said that when I go out in the sun, I feel really good and it actually improves my eyesight. That was said for years. Two years ago, we had the first study that showed that. It actually does improve eyesight, the red light specifically. But that started with the anecdotes. It leads to the hypothesis. Then we bring the science in. So you can be a little bit ahead of the curve sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. Not medical advice. Be careful with this one. Uh, by, by listening to what other people are saying and what they say is effective. And then, again, you have a whole different problem when there actually is science behind what you're doing. And some people might still deny it. With that said, I'm really curious, if you don't mind, can you explain, I think this is a confusing one for many people. It's actually a bit confusing for myself. I, I have an elementary understanding of it. Why are some chiropractors cash-based and why are some insurance-based? Because obviously from a consumer perspective, you'd say, well, of course, I want the insurance option, but it's a little more nuanced than that, from my understanding. A lot of it is chiropractors in general, they work in the solo practice. So if you can take insurance, the problem is you're going to spend sometimes 30, 40 minutes every session doing someone's insurance claim to bill it out to the insurance company and still have to charge them a copay deductible. So I know a chiropractor, a good buddy of mine in what UCLA or Westwood, he's been near UCLA, him and his wife spend all day, one day a week doing all the insurances of one day. That's one out of the five days they work. So it's do you want to spend that time and frustration, I call it, doing that paperwork, which I don't mind taking insurances. I'm okay with that. 
Um, or you're gonna, or you can do is hire someone else to do it for you and pay them and hopefully pay them well to do to do that paperwork for you. I have my office manager, Bonnie. She's she's she runs the office. I've been, she was here before me. I just get I just get paid every month. I just say thank you. That's it. I don't know what I do. I don't know. I don't even know what that comes in. I don't really care. But she's she's on the phone four or five days a week. Has three lines. Answers them each each individually and checks insurances. Gets gets the payments. Sends the billing out. Does it online. Does it paper billing. Everything. So she's always busy doing that. That's her really her own job. But she does everything also. Without her, I wouldn't want to take insurance either. That is because it's because their job when when you build an insurance company is deny as much as possible. Yeah. So it's hard for someone who wants to help somebody tell them, yeah, you have twelve visits, but your copay is going to be twenty dollars, but we only can approve six visits. Got that it. makes the chiropractor look bad. So you get you get not only the frustration of having to build insurance that don't want to pay, then you have people that are upset because they thought they had twelve visits. But you only get approved for six. Okay. Is and, it, and, and, and when you go cash practice, then it's going to be okay. I don't worry about it. I charge a flat rate for all the adjustments. Boom, boom, boom. If you want to pay that, cool. If not, cool. It's simpler, and and some doctors go that way, which I understand. But you're missing out people that do have some insurance that you can help out with and get them better. I, for me, I don't know who's cash or is insurance. I, I, I do know some. I'll give you that, but not all of them because it doesn't matter to me. I'm I'm more back off. I don't deal with the big picture. Okay, that's my last manager's job. But I, but if but again, but if you have quality care and quality communication with your patients, it doesn't matter what you charge. They're going to want your care. So as a practitioner, yeah. we we increase our prices about ten about twenty percent the last say three four months or so. We've seen more people. It just it's people want good care and they're willing to pay for it. Couple more bucks, not a lot of money. At that point, if, and then they, they may pay a small, they may do a small package. But half our patients are cash, half our insurance for that reason. If they have good insurance, we'll take them. If they don't have good insurance, we'll charge them. But it's Isn't it amazing how sometimes you get the best clients with that too when you charge a little more and what you're worth and can actually deliver a higher service because of it? Well, then, Ethan, as, as you, or Evan, as you know too, when you pay, you pay attention. I like you're going to yeah. want to get yourself better because now I've paid, I got to show up. I got to do the extra. I do stretches. I'm going to get better because now I've paid to actually get into the office. I I think a lot of the FDN practitioners, uh, you know, think I'm a little cheesy sometimes when I say this, but that's I try to emphasize this so much because it's like, oh, Evan, yes, you're such a charitable person by charging them more, um, so that they pay more attention. But it's like, this is real. I'm talking to a person who's been in practice for 20 years. If sure. you charge 50 bucks for your FDN program versus 5,000, again, and don't be charging yeah, yeah. or don't do the same activities for 50 versus 5,000. That's ridiculous. But not only does it give you permission and the ability to offer a higher level of service to that person, but again, I, I love that what you said. When you pay, you pay attention. Um, absolutely. You're going to notice $5,000 out of your account, not 50, 50 bucks for a lot of us. Unfortunately, in today's world, it was like either buy three dozen eggs or, you know, get your FDN program, I guess. So I, I totally agree with that. What a, and it's a really good lesson because we do talk about business on here sometimes. And a lot of the FDNs might be newer. They they might not ever have really ran a business before and they're trying this. So it's always interesting to hear from someone who's been doing this for a while. And you are obviously a great person who cares about your clients. You just got to do it sometimes. And the weirdest part about it is everyone ends up getting better results. Everyone's happier. Oh. Um, sounds like a winning game. Well, and if, if someone comes in and first question ask, the first question asks, how much is it? The staff goes, uh, it's going to be a lot of money for you. You may not want to come in. When, when, when someone's priority is their pocket versus get their health, we're going, we're too busy as it is. You know, it's probably best to go somewhere else. Wow. And the problem is you go somewhere else, it's going to be half the price. You'll get hot the quality care. And you want, you want to come back anyways. So at that point, why waste your time? You know, but again, I, and maybe because I've been practicing 20 years now, I, I don't, it's when you have a standard of care and you try to dilute that, then it makes the equal, that's also a law, as you know, I'm too, it's equal exchange, right? So the more we charge, the more we're going to give them. But if we charge less, we, we're going to feel we have to give them less, but that's not what we want to give them. So now we're frustrated because now there's that imbalance there also. So I want to make sure my patients know, they, here's my cell phone number. Call me on the weekends if you have any questions. Here's the exercise. Call me if you have a question about the exercise. Here's, 
here's this, whatever you need, let me know. Blah, blah. So I want to make sure they can contact me, which they, they never do for some reason. I don't think they like me. When you give someone your number, but my, my, my avenue patient, they come in that night, the next day, I'll call them. Hey, how'd it go? How's your visit? What are you calling? I want to make sure you're okay. My doctors don't call me. Well, I'm not your doctor. I'm your chiropractor. Yep. How'd the exercises feel? How'd the icing go? Oh yeah. Maybe try this is okay. Here's my number. If you have any questions, call me, text me, normal business hours. Boom. Have a good day. I'll see your next visit. Takes Love two it. minutes. Boom. But they won't call because they know they can reach you because they know you're on their side. Unless they have That's emergency, awesome. right? That's going to happen. You know, but you're saving them going to the ER, going to a medical doctor, going, I don't know what's working. What's, why is it not working? They're going to go, okay, let me say that for next visit. It makes, it makes them ease instead of being stressed about what they had to pay or not pay. At that point, they feel, okay, now, I, now I'm at more at ease. I'm less anxious. I'm less stressed. I feel less pain. Boom. Awesome. Easy, but it, but take, but I've had good mentors also. I mean, this is not epiphany. I've had good mentors my my whole career. And when I first as an associate, then also as when I bought the practice here, part of my buying into this practice twenty years ago was a previous chiropractor coming back and mentoring us. He spent thousand dollars on programs, program management program, patient programs, everything. So I took that information and then brought down the little down to what I thought was the simple things to live by to help people, and then that's it. Amazing. What a actually really great tip for FTNs out there too, because I know that we're, you know, we're consulting with people one-on-one -on -one for possibly an hour to two hours at a time, but that call thing, I just might use that, especially, um, I told you, I think I told you we do some red light therapy here, uh, in person. Okay. No, I don't think we discussed that, but anyway, yeah, I have a business where we do red light therapy and other things. And that would actually be really interesting to just give the people a call, um, because we do care, you know, I just never even thought it, to do that. Admittedly, so. Sometimes you just gotta leave a message. They won't even pick up the phone. Yeah, and I, right. a lot of, yes. You know, yeah. message. Here's my number. Boom, call me. But I mean, I have a lot of rollover minutes. Evan from like 2009 or something like that from my old Verizon account. I have a lot of rollover. I have to use those minutes up. They don't. They don't roll over all the time, right? A lot of us have unlimited phone plans. It's just it's time. End of your end of your work day. Next morning, boom. I have my staff knows. Give me their number on the way out. Give me their email number, email address. At that point, yeah. it's it's a constant reminder for us to care for our patients. Amazing. It's not that hard. Dr. Tony, one thing I wanted to make sure we got to today, um, we're not finished up yet. We got about, you know, 15 minutes left roughly. Right. But one thing I wanted to make sure we touched on today is really painting this picture of uh, kind of the interesting things uh, that chiropractic care can do for people. So obviously we mentioned the things that people would typically associate with it, the, the neck and back pain and stuff like that. One of the things that's promoted in chiropractic medicine, though, is this idea that, you know, if everything is kind of orderly and going well in the spine and other places, you might actually see uh, great health results in other areas that you might not have suspected. So from e even if it's just a client testimonial thing or you want to explain it, either or is fine. Um, but I'm kind of curious, have there been adjustments done in this 20 years of your practice where, you know, someone comes in thinking that they have one problem, but it actually helps support a completely different area of their body? So one that comes to mind, and, and uh, I plethora of my head, is lady comes in. I've seen her for a while now. She goes, she walks in the front office. She sees me from the back off. She goes, as there's people in the waiting room, she goes, doctor, you got me pregnant. I go, excuse me? She goes, no, no. From all your adjustments, my back is feeling better. Everything feels good. And now I'm pregnant. Me and my husband are having our third kid. I'm like, good. Thanks for clarifying that, Barth. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. Just start with that next time. Yes. Start with that. And Mercedes like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, I know you're excited. Everyone get it? Everyone's good? Okay, we're good. You know? But a lot of it is chiropractic helps the body relax. Okay? Your nervous system in your body controls everything in your body and how it functions. So back here, if you can see it, there's heart, lungs, liver, kidneys, your your urethra, um, how how your intestines run for how much you defecate, urinate, all that stuff too, even how your brain works where it's not stressed. So when our body's healthy, those organs work and they function well. When it's when there's a pinched nerve or your nerve system is off, can cause can cause you to feel like you're having chest pain, can cause anxiety, it can cause your body not to sleep well, can cause you I had a patient come in, mechanic, had a bad injury at work, um, thought he hurt his back. He hadn't gone to the bathroom in three days. So I took his x-ray and said, you're out of here. There's a hospital down the street. Go to the hospital. He had back surgery that night. Whoa. So when we catch things that will help someone live longer, for one, 
but also stress to the body. These, these nerves, not only do they work to help your body function well, but also takes out outside stressors and able, when it functions well, to handle those stressors doesn't affect you personally. So, the, so physically, when your body is more, like we mentioned before, the wrist being tight becomes weaker, more sore, more tight. So at that point, your body can handle the stress of your day for physical job. Mentally, if your your system is off, where your body is stressed, even when you're sleeping, you don't get the deep delta REM sleep. Then at that point, you wake up the next day more feeling overly stressed, feeling some of anxious, even depressed. Also, help people with I help people with depression. Help people relieve the nerve pressures. They can start doing more to make their body handle the stress of their day. Evan, that's what I do. Handle stress of their day. I had someone come in this two weeks ago. She was diagnosed with not having neck problem. It was a psychological problem. They told her. Yeah, it's in your head. Go see a therapist. Therapist, a therapy for six months. Couldn't figure out what it was. Comes in my office. First adjustment, I feel 50% better. Second adjustment, I can actually sleep now. Third adjustment, I my life now feels like there's nothing hanging over my head. So something, I mean, another patient at, at, at uh, two years ago was under pain management for a low back. She thought a low back surgery for 10 years. Her pain management, because of that medication overuse, she had not left her house in 10 years. See the doctor, come back home. She actually, because her doctor, her pain management doctor retired, she stopped taking medication, had to go through withdrawals. I saw her for three times a week for about four or five weeks. At the end of that period, she went on a trip with her sister to Vegas. People's quality of life, people understand your quality of life is important to not only you to get here, but also us when you let us help you. Yeah. So our goal is, can we relieve the nerve pressure? Yes. Make your back pain better? Yes. But can we make the things that you don't think there are nerve related better so your quality of life is better and you can stay there but in the right things to get better? I have stories on stories on stories on stories. Someone come in, I have chest pain. I'm like, okay, are you in the right place? <laughs> <laughs> I, go, uh, what, what did the, I always ask them, what did the cardiologist say? I have no heart problems. I go, hmm, the nerve from your from C1 goes to your heart. Do you feel would you feel the chest pain when you're stressed? Yes. Perfect. Got you. That means that stress made your symptoms, your body tell you this is what you're gonna where I'm gonna make you feel when you're stressed. Let's make that stress reduced. Start adjusting your have to go for walks after work. She goes, either either you help me, doctor, or I'm gonna quit my job. I go, wow. okay, that's a lot of pressure. So, so yeah. at that point, she's driving an hour and a half to work every every day, hour and a half back and forth. I'm going to find a way to relax at work, go for a walk, start eating better, go for a walk when you get home. I sit down, stretching. But So I gave her a routine to start doing. Four weeks, she's like, you know what, doc? I'm going to quit my job and I feel a lot better. But it's something, it's, the problem is sometimes medicine, and it's, it's usually the person, not the profession, will give someone the wrong advice, but they take it as the Bible. The patient does. I had a patient, Rachel, she comes in, she's in her, in her mid, late 50s, kind of kind of a little bit older and, and, and a walker. I go, okay, not good, but we'll see. Bilateral leg pain, I'm like, oh, that's not good either. Doctors, and, and I, go, I took her actually to go, I go, Rachel, that's wrong with your back. Your back's fine. Why are you in a walker? Well, the doctor said if my back hurt, lie down on the couch and don't move. At that point, if it hurts for cause of pain, just, just relax. Don't do anything. Did that for six months. What happens to someone who sits for six months? Weaker, tighter, weaker, tighter, weaker. Like, Rachel, Absolutely. I said, you're not going to like me, but you're going to have to start walking more. But it hurts. I know it hurts. Do you want to end up in a – I always ask them, do you want to be in a, in a uh, nursing home watching bad daytime TV, waiting for your bed, bed pad to be changed out? She goes, no. And she said something in Spanish, which seemed like derogatory, but I don't want to say it was. I don't, I don't know what it was. At that <laughs> point, I, I said, okay. So she comes. I adjust her. Come back could be so days later. And she goes, it hurts, but I feel a little bit stronger. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, we'll do it again. Boom. And then within within three months, she's walking half an hour without a cane or walker. Wow. <laughs> but giving someone different advice on they can do it versus they shouldn't do it is gives them permission to be uncomfortable and sometimes a little bit in pain to get better. Pain yeah. is your signal telling you there's a problem. And covering up with medication, you're not ibuprofen deficient. You're not Tylenol deficient. You have to find a way to deal with a problem causing the pain, not just cover up the pain. That's with all doctors, right? FDN, everything included. Mm -hmm. 
the one thing that you said that I think will particularly relate to this audience, and I don't, I don't want to oversimplify it, but it's kind of fascinating. When I originally asked the question, you talked about how it gives the body permission to relax. And fundamentally, if anyone here has gone through the course mm-hmm. to any degree, you know, that's actually what we teach. We talk about hidden stressors. And you say, well, no, no, no. We talk about labs and all this stuff. What do you mean? Well, the stuff that we're looking for on the labs, hormonal, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, nervous system. What we're looking for are issues in those systems that are leading to so much stress that your body's innate healing ability that comes when you're uh, resting and relaxing can activate. So, I mean, conceptually, this is identical. You're just doing a different form of stress or addressing a different form of stress. When the body's chilled out, when the body's in a healing state, it's actually kind of amazing what it can do. And I, this one is so over-referenced in the uh, functional medicine space, but to me, it's, it's worth saying a million times. It's the paper cut thing. No one has to tell a paper cut on their finger, oh, you got to heal. You don't have to go to a doctor for it. You don't have to take anything special for it. It is a minor example of what happens to the body. because It's a small stress. Even if you're uh, super stressed out, it's going to heal. Even a type 2 diabetic, it'll heal a little long or take a little longer, but it will still heal. But it healed. That's the bottom line. That right there proves undeniably that the body has an innate healing ability. So then the question is, well, why don't the chronic diseases heal? What about the cancers? There's way more stress than just a piece of paper rubbing up against your finger the wrong way, right? So you got to address those things and remove them. And when you do that, wow, this body is, regardless of what you believe, uh, it's either designed or created absolutely perfectly. It's it's an amazing thing. This is logically very similar to everybody else. When, when there's a standard of understanding physiology, the paper cut, the the breathing automatically, everything what we do automatically, we take for granted because we don't even know something. We take for granted what we're doing. But how do we? How does the stressors from our environment, maybe our diet or nutrition, our mental health, everything, affect our ability to handle those stressors? At that point, our body will change to let us know, hopefully early, that hey, we can't handle this stressor. You need to change something. And as, as healthcare practitioners, as we are at that point allows us to now investigate how to help them understand what the stressors are and either remove or reduce those stressors and get the body to handle more stress based on other things that are making them body unhealthy. Cool. Dr. Tony, uh, this is, I, I never know who I'm going to get guest wise, uh, because I actually like to, I always tell people this is not an insult to them. I always actually like to look up as little as possible. So I do the bios, I do the website, and I do that because I want to ask genuine questions. I want to go in with a healthy level of ignorance. But then it surprises me every now and then when we get a great guest on, I'm like, holy crap, you and I could easily go for five hours. We would not have, I could just tell. Um, but we don't have that today, unfortunately. So I know that you're going to be doing some other things uh, with FDN, I believe. I think Lucy was on there. So you'll be doing some things with AFDNP, which is fantastic. Um, for today, I know that, again, you have your in-person business. I'd love if you shouted out the website, but you also have a podcast. And I mean, anyone around the world can listen to that. So uh, please, where can people find you? Yep. The show is probably there too. It's called Crooked Spine Show. Crooked Spine Show. <laughs> my website is in my title too, Euclid Chiropractic. That's our that's our website or we're in Upland, California. Uh, a lot of it is, what is on YouTube? Uh, YouTube is probably our best resource, like, like myself, best resource for education, understanding what my patients go through, how we educate our patients. That when you see a sample size of someone you can probably relate to, but also a sample size of our information we give our patients to make them want to feel better and heal better. And you'll see my interviews there too. Again, Crooked Spine Show. And on my playlist, I have about four or five playlists on my YouTube channel, you can kind of practice, allows you to kind of choose from that. And you'll, you can spend, I've had a website since, since they had what YouTube was open like 2004 or something like that. I've had what, uh, YouTube since then. I put stuff on there, many, 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 many videos. So go down the rabbit hole. If you understand chiropractic, understand how we help people and understand what we do. At that point, make your personal decision because most people have common sense what's going to help you heal and then stay healed by educating yourself how to stay healthy in simple things. I'm not going to have someone go buy a $10,000 pillow, buy a lot of stuff, equipment they need for the house. Get yourself healthy by understanding what it takes simply to keep your body healthy. You can do it every day consistently, every day consistently, keep your body healthy. That's all, that's all, someone asked me. How often should I stretch? How often should I do my exercises? I tell them days to end with why, which is every day. If you want to stay healthy, it's up to you. It doesn't matter to me. So um, I love it. Again, thanks for being a great guest. And thanks for coming on with, there's nothing wrong when someone offers something. That's a, a fine trade-off, but I really uh, have a, 
a genuine respect for someone who comes on with the level of enthusiasm that you did with. And there's really not much most of us could give you other than just our listening ears. So uh, well, we appreciate well, you, man. Thank you, you know, so much. Well, you know, Evan is, is really just getting people to understand how Kyber can help them. That's all I want people to understand. That keeps me busy, keeps my mind busy, keeps hopefully people wanting to help people. When I'm gone, still see chiropractic. Yep. I got the signature question for you really quick on the podcast. The question is, if we could give you, in this case, a magic wand, you could wave it, and you could get every single person in this world to do one thing for their health. So that means you can force us all to start doing one thing, or you can force us all to stop doing one thing. What's the one thing you get us all to do? Sit up straight. Oh, geez. I was hunching to some of this podcast, damn it. All right. I'm good. That's And that's all it is. Basically, one thing is just here, sit up this way. If you can just sit up to where your body is more upright and it can actually stay here, that would help my office be, not be as busy. Evan, I have shoulders that are sore every day because I see so many people. It's tough to do what I do. <laughs> yeah. First time in 280 episodes. Seems so simple. No one said it yet. So... Again, thank you for coming on and sharing your expertise. Welcome, my friend.